Hello friends, we are not employed by Fang company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do spiral matrix lead code problem, and this problem has been asked by tons of my favorite companies, uh, companies like Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Google, Adobe, Uber, Bloomberg, TikTok, Walmart, Tesla, Paytm, Flipkart, ByteDance, eBay, Goldman Sachs, Robinhood, and Salesforce. So you can imagine that this problem has been really popular at top tier IT companies and that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. So this is a lead code medium problem and basically we are given an M cross N matrix and we need to return all the elements inside the matrix in a spiral order. So suppose we are given matrix like this in a three by three matrix. We need to iterate over this given matrix in this following fashion in a spiral and return elements in that sequence. So to make things more understandable, I have drawn different matrix of different sizes. And let's see that what would be the spiral traversal for each one of them. So we will always start at the 0, 0 position and then we will start traversing on the right side until we hit a boundary. So over here we hit a boundary and then because we hit a boundary we will go uh, downwards. Now again downwards we hit a boundary again. Again we will go in the left direction. Again we hit a boundary over here of the matrix. Now we will again go upwards in the direction. But now this time we will not wait for us to uh, hit a boundary. We will actually stop at this position number 4. Why? Because if we keep going going uh, in this upwards direction we will end up at this position number one which is though it is before the boundary still this is the node that has already been visited which means that we are traversing in a particular direction until the point where whether we hit a boundary or we hit a visited node so this is a really important concept to understand now let's go back to the traversal so again from this four we will come back at this point five and now from this five you can realize that there is no other direction this five can go to and this would be the answer so this would be the end of the traversal let's see let's do the traversal for this 4 by 4 matrix so again we start at this initial position we start going on the right direction then again we go downwards again we go leftwards then we go up until the point when we hit uh, this visited node again we go right again we go down and again we go left and this would be the traversal for this 5 by 5 let me quickly show you what would be the traversal and of course it's pretty simple to understand so I know you also know that what would be the tra traversal this is how we are traversing in each one of each or uh, all three of the cases. Now remember that there are two important things to consider over here. First thing is that at any point we are traversing, we are always following a pattern in terms of the number of directions or the type of direction we are taking. And that pattern is always we start at the initial position, uh, which is this one. And then we always go on the right side first. After going the right direction, we go downwards. So we go downwards. After going downwards, we go leftwards and after going leftwards, again, we go in the up direction. So we go upwards. Then again, we go back on the rightwards. Again, we go down and again, we go left and dry up and we keep on following until we reach to a point where all the nodes that are adjacent to any particular node. So in this case, this number 10, where all the other nodes, they have already been visited. In this case, it would be this node number 13, where all the other nodes, they have already been visited. So we are traversing until the point where we exhaust out of all the nodes that we can traverse. And let's see that what would be the approach for us to solve this problem. Like we already know that what are the directions we need to traverse into. And we are always traversing in any particular direction until the point where either we hit a boundary or we hit a visited node. Which means that these things are important for us to keep track of that this boundary or this visited node we need to understand that how to identify them how to keep track of them and what are the different approaches to tackle both of these and what would be the solution so in order to solve this problem there are actually two different solutions i am showing you both of them you can pick whatever you want to both have its pros and cons and you can discuss it with your interviewer which solution you want to pick so let's go with the first one now first approach is that we actually start shrinking the boundaries and we don't care about visited nodes. How we are going to do it, let me quickly show it to you. So first of all, we always start at this initial position. We know the directions we need to take. We go right, then we go down, then we go left and then again we go up. This is the, uh, the state of direction we are going to follow. Let me also create our answer of the nodes that we are going to uh, traverse along. So first of all, we start at this position number one and then we follow un up until this point where we hit a boundary over here. Now the moment we hit a boundary over here, we are going to add all of these values to our answer. So let me quickly add all the nodes to my answer 
and then because we hit a boundary over here and this was the direction right direction we know that next direction we need to go is downwards so we start going downwards but we are going to do one thing important over here and that thing we are going to do is we are going to ignore all of them and we are going to actually shrink our boundary up until this point so originally this matrix was actually 4 by 4 matrix now we are going to convert this matrix to be a uh, 3 by 4 matrix and we are going to ignore this first row as if that never actually bothered and that never actually existed uh, so by doing so what we are doing is that we don't need to take care of these uh, elements and since we have already added them to our answer so they are always going to be in, in our answer as well right now again we go downwards in the same path until the point where we hit a boundary so we hit a boundary over here we are going to add all the nodes to our answer so nodes would be 8 12 and 16 in this sequence and again we are going to ignore all of them because we have seen all of them and now again we are going to shrink our boundary up until this point and we are going to ignore all of these places so let me actually remove them that they never existed for us now again after downwards we will start traversing on the left direction so we go until this point we will add all the entries on in our answer and again we are going to delete all of them because they never existed for us and our uh, boundary actually shrinks even further and after that we start going up in the upwards direction but notice over here we don't have to care about these nodes because we have already shrunk our boundary to only consider up until this point which means that we are going to add this values 9 and 5 and again shrink our boundary and then we will add this value 6 and 7 again shrink our boundary add value number 11 and then again shrink our boundary and in the end we are only left with one value value number 10 and we will add it to our answer and this would be the answer that we need to return so this solution works perfectly fine we don't have to bother keeping track of the number of nodes visited because we are shrinking our boundary with every single iteration and let's see that what are the pros and cons of this one so first of all we will try to calculate that what is the time and space complexity for this one so time complexity is actually going to be big o of m cross n why m cross n because we have to iterate all the nodes inside the given matrix so that is a given thing now in terms of space complexity we are actually doing it in a constant space complexity like you can't consider this answer to be a space complexity because anyways we have to return a list of uh, all the nodes that we have traversed so that is part of the answer that is not part of uh, our algorithm and that is why this is a very good approach and you can discuss with your interviewer that if he is okay with this approach you can also move forward with this one let me show you what would be the second approach So for the second approach we are actually going to keep track of the visited cells and also the boundaries and whichever we hit first we are actually going to change our direction. So one thing remains common is that we are always going to traverse in the same sequence of direction. So first of all we will traverse in the right direction then we will go in the downwards path then we will go in the leftwards path and then we will go on the upwards path. So this will remain common and then we keep on repeating and at any moment we hit either a visited cell or we hit a boundary so originally we are at this position number uh, one and we are going to mark all the coordinates of the matrix so the coordinates of the matrix is going to be 0 1 2 3 and 0 1 2 3 now current position of this one is actually 0 0 we can see over here so what we are going to do is we are going to create a hash set and inside the hash set we are going to first of all check that whether the coordinate that we are visiting have we visited it already or not if we have not visited it we will add an entry to our hash set so at this position number one we will add an entry to our hash set saying that okay currently we are we have we have already visited this coordinate number zero zero and we are also going to create our answer list and inside the answer list we are going to mention all the nodes that we have traversed which we need to return in the end so we will add this entry number one and then we will keep iterating on this direction on the right side until we hit either a boundary or a visited node 
remember either a boundary or a visited node both the things we are keeping track of so and at the same time we are going to add all the entries so in this case we will we would have added entries like 0 0 0 1 0 2 and 0 3 all the things we have added we have already also added it to our answer that we have already uh, traversed this nodes 1 2 3 and 4 and now we know that we since because we have hit a boundary it is time for us to go in the downwards di direction so again we will go in the downwards direction until the point we hit a boundary and we would have also added all the values to our hash set as well again and also to our answer list as well like i am not going to bother writing all of them but i can understand that you are smart enough to understand that again we go on the leftwards direction until the point we hit a boundary and again we start going on the upwards direction but notice that when we are going in the upwards direction we are actually going up until this point number five we are adding all the values to our hash set we are also adding all the values to our answer now at this five when we go try to go this position number one we would have ident we would first check that okay whether this position number one which is located at the coordinate zero zero have we visited it already or not and we would identify that okay the zero zero has already been visited which means that because it has been visited we actually don't need to uh, go on go and do that again or what we need to do is change our direction so at from this position number five again we would change our direction in the same manner where would have where we would have changed our direction if we would have encountered any boundary so uh, then again we will add all those entries six and seven and again uh, add them to our hash set and then we keep iterating until we reach to the end of all uh, the entire matrix and we would have visited all of them now this solution works perfectly fine now but the thing is you would immediately say that hey uh, this solution actually we are using an additional hash set which means that for the space complexity we are actually using big o of m cross n space complexity which means how come this solution be can be better this is actually a bad solution uh, so your interviewer is definitely going to uh, let you know that okay you don't you can't use this hash set to keep track of all the visited nodes uh, in this case what we are going to do is there is another solution to solve this problem without keeping track of all of the visited number of nodes so at any position if we have visited some node what we are going to do is we are going to add it to our answer list first and then we are going to change its value and how we are going to change its values we are going to put something random that is out of bounds or it does, doesn't even make sense uh, so over here suppose we are at this position number one and then we start traversing this one two three four so we have traversed one two three four we have added it to our answer and then at the same time the moment we uh, we are done with traversing through any node we are actually going to change its value to something let's say uh, minus 100 or let's say value number false or something like that right anything that is not part that can never be a part of this matrix and we need to replace our value with this one so let's say let's say in this case we replace our value with this minus 100 considering that this would not be a part of this matrix like it can be and then you can change this value you can discuss it with your interviewer and then again we start iterating in the same fashion so again we would have added all the values to our answer list and again we would have changed all of its values to whatever the value we decided and we are going to keep repeating the same work up until this point and notice that at pos this position number five when we try to go upwards we are going to check that okay if the value of this particular cell if that is not minus 100 then only we can say that okay this node has not been visited and then only we will add it to our answer but the moment we find out that okay this value is actually minus 100 which means we have already visited this node and added to our answer already so now we have to change our direction in the same manner where we would have changed our direction if we we had encountered any boundary and then we would follow the same path and we would be able to solve this problem so if we see the time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is also going to be big o of m cross n and the space complexity is actually going to be big o of one constant time space complexity now you would argue that the issue with this approach is that we are actually changing whatever the given input is and that is not a bad practice that is not a good practice in when you are actually doing inside the job but when you are giving any competitive coding interview uh, your interviewer might expect you to do it so it's always good to know a, a better approach let's move on to coding now 
so first of all we are going to create an integer called visited and we are going to assign it some random value so let's assign 101 uh, also we are going to create two variables to keep track of the number of rows and number of columns we have after that we are going to uh, have a couple of variables to keep track of the row position and column position we are at and we are going to initialize it to value number zero now we have to iterate over our four directions so we are going to create a 2d array uh, we are going to name it as directions and we are going to iterate over all the four directions so we are going to have four coordinates that would be used to go to any direction we want to and we are going to maintain a sequence uh, where the first would be to go to right then next would be to go to down then left and then up now we need to keep track of what is the current direction we are at and when we need to change the direction so we are going to initialize couple of variables uh, called current direction and the change direction and we are going to in assign the value 0 to both of them so we will have to create a, an array list to store the result so we are going to initialize a list of integers to store the answer and, uh, inside the inside our answer we are going to add the first node of our matrix which is located at position 0 0 and after that uh, remember every time we up, we go through any value we will have to update that value inside the matrix because i am showing you the implementation for the second approach i showed in the in, uh, explanation video so we will update the value of this matrix node to this visited element that we already set up now we will start iterating over our uh, given matrix and we are going to have a few conditions so first thing is we need to iterate over the given matrix also we have to iterate over in a particular direction and the moment we encounter a condition where we are either reaching a boundary or reaching a visited node we will have to change the direction so we are going to use current direction and change direction and make conditions around them so first first of all we are going to have a while loop that while the change direction is actually going to be less than 2 and why less than 2 because we are we have four directions and at any point we can only go in one direction and when we are the maximum amount of patterns we have is either we can go on right down or left up path and that is what we are going to use once that is done we will have another while loop that takes care of all the possible ways where we need to restrict our matrix first to four conditions would be to check that whether we are hitting a boundary and the last condition is to check that whether we are hitting a visited node or not if none of this is true first of all we will have to reset the change direction to zero because we are not breaking any direction after that we are going to update the value of row and column then we will add the current matrix row and column position to our answer array list and then we will update that value for that particular row and column position to visited uh, value and after first loop ends we will have to update the values of the current direction and change direction so for the current direction we are actually going to add a value and then we are going to module it by 4 and we will have to update the value of our change direction and after both the loop ends uh, basically our answer array list should have all the elements and we would have traversed the matrix so we can simply return that let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working let's submit this code and our code actually runs 100% faster than all the other solutions which is pretty nice also i have created a github repository where i have been where i'm storing all the problems that i have solved so far and you can go to any problem and you would be able to find the java solution for that and you can use it it's quite helpful and uh, i would be posting this link in the solution as well also this uh, solution in the comments as well so you can check it out from there thank you